गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू ऑनलाइन बायोलॉजी क्लासेस आई होप यू ऑल आर सेफ एंड हेल्दी एट योर होम एज वी वर ऑन चैप्टर टू इन बायोलॉजी दिस इज द कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ द चैप्टर द लास्ट टॉपिक दैट वी हैव स्टार्टेड वॉज फर्टिलाइजेशन टॉपिक फॉर टूडे इज द फ्रूट एंड द सीड after the process of fertilization take place in the plant or inside the flower a fruit is formed and then seed is formed so let us begin formation of fruits after fertilization the following changes take place in a flower so when the fertilization process is completed there are certain changes which take place inside the flower what are the changes the petals sepals and stamens wither away means they fall off they dry and they fall off the ovary increases in size and develop into a fruit the ovary which was having ovule inside it it increases in size and become large and it develops into a fruit it changes into a fruit the ovules which were inside the ovary they develop into seed the ovules which were the eggs which were inside the ovary now those eggs develop into a seed so these are the changes which take place inside the flower after the process of fertilization and this is how fruit and seeds are formed parts of a fruit and their function what is a fruit a fruit is a ripened ovary ripened means it is ripe it is not raw it is ripened ovary a ovary which has become ripe now it is not a raw ovary but it is a ripened ovary so a fruit is a ripened ovary this is the definition of fruit a fleshy fruit consists of two parts the two parts of a fleshy fruit are pericarp and seed what is pericarp or fruit wall it is the outer covering of the fruit which is called as pericarp and inside the fruit we usually find a seed so that is the second part of the fruit pericarp develops from the wall of the ovary and consists of three parts now this pericarp or the outer covering of the fruit it develops from the ovary wall and it is having three parts epicarp mesocarp and endocarp epicarp what is epicarp it is the outer thin and leathery part of the fruit now see nowadays it is the season of mango we all are fond of eating mangoes so before eating mango we wash it and then we peel it the part that we peel in the mango or any fruit the outer covering which is thin and leathery it is called epicarp usually this covering is discarded or thrown away but in some fruits we eat the epicarp also the second the second part of the pericarp is the mesocarp the middle fleshy part is called mesocarp now what is mesocarp this middle portion the yellow portion of the mango that we eat which is very sweet which is very tasty that is the mesocarp it constitute the sweet and fleshy part which is usually eaten and the third part of the pericarp is endocarp it is the innermost 
hard part that contains the seed is called endocarp now what is endocarp it is after the mesocarp and it is the innermost very hard portion that contains the seed now the seed of the mango that we throw away that is the endocarp if you open up endocarp you will find a very small baby seed inside it and if you will sow that a mango tree or a mango plant will develop from it so these are the parts of fruit epicarp mesocarp and endocarp inside the endocarp there is a small seed types of fruit there are usually two types of fruit one is dry fruit another is fleshy fruit dry fruit as the name is suggesting the fruit wall is hard thin and dry fruit wall means the pericarp the first layer that the peel of the fruit is very dry thin and hard it is not divided into three layers there are no three layers pericarp mesocarp and endocarp example of dry fruit some plants which are having dry fruits are gram pea bean and maize produce dry fruits second type of fruit is fleshy fruit the name is suggesting it will be fleshy in nature or pulpy in nature the fruit wall pericarp that is the outer portion of the fruit is thick and fleshy it is distinguished or divided into three layers what are the three layer epicarp mesocarp and endocarp now fleshy fruit is having the three layers the mesocarp is fleshy or fibrous fibrous means having fiber just like mango mango is a very fibrous fruit example plum tomato mango brinjal and orange produce fleshy fruits so these are the types of fruits what are the functions of a fruit a fruit protect the immature seed from animal and extreme climatic condition now as we know that fruit is having a seed inside it so the main function of the fruit is to protect the seed which is inside it from the outer climatic condition harsh climatic condition second it stores food material third it attracts animals that help in dispersing or scattering the seed to distant places just like pollination in pollination pollen grains are transferred from one uh, from one flower to another that is called cross pollination similarly seeds are also transferred from one place to another that is called dispersal of seed and what help in dispersal of seed the fruit which is very attractive to the animal the animal will eat the fruit take away the fruit from there and throw on the seed somewhere else so that will help in dispersal or transferring of seed to various places so these are the three functions of a fruit the seed now the next topic is the seed after the fruit is formed the fruit is having a seed inside it the ovules present in the ovary develops into seeds after fertilization this i have already explained you the ovules the eggs which were there they develop into a seed after the process of fertilization a fruit may have one seed as in mango or many seed as in lemon a fruit may have one seed or many seed just like in lemon or watermelon seeds of different plants show great diversity in size shape and appearance so seeds may, may vary in the size they may be small very small very large or they may vary in the shape and also in the appearance Uh, in their color or texture 
structure of a seed a seed contains a seed coat and an embryo or a baby plant what is a seed coat in this diagram if you see the outer brown covering of the seed the outer brown portion which you can see the outline that is the seed coat it is just like a covering of a seed and inside the seed there is a embryo which converts into a baby plant later when we sow the seed embryo is seen when the seed coat is removed when you will remove the outer layer the brown layer you will see the embryo embryo consists of two fleshy cotyledons and a short curved structure called embryonal axis now you can see the green portion or yellowish portion which you can see this is the cotyledons the embryo contains two cotyledons and in the center the cotyledons are divided by the embryonal axis the cotyledons are attached to the embryonal axis the cotyledons have food inside them for the baby plant what is the function of cotyledons now these cotyledons are having food inside them they are store food inside them for the baby plant when the embryo start growing it changes into a baby plant and the baby plant get food from the cotyledon the axis consists of two parts the lower part is called radical which forms the root system and the upper part which consists of small leafy structure called plumule which grows into shoot system now this embryonal axis is having two part radical and plumule the radical give rise it grows downwards inside the soil and give rise to the root system and plumule it forms the leaves of the baby plant first leaves of the baby plant and it grows upward above the soil and give rise to the shoot system so these are the parts of a seed the last topic for today is types of seeds based on number of cotyledons seeds are of two type monocot or monocotyledonous seed which have only one cotyledon now if a seed is having only one cotyledon example rice and wheat it will be called as monocot or monocotyledonous seed or dicot or dicotyledonous seed which have two cotyledon example tomato and peas now in this case this seed is having how many cotyledons two cotyledons so this is a dicot seed and if a seed will be having only one cotyledon it will not be divided into two parts it will be called as a monocot seed example of dicot seed is tomato and peas so thank you students that's all for today this chapter will be continued do revise the topics clear your doubts if any and have a good day